Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch. Today we're going to be looking at a really handy tool for dealing with Unreal Engine assets. You can think of this one as a bit of a Swiss Army knife utility. And the funny thing is, it's a total flash from the past, which was just recently updated. And what you can do is use this to get Unreal Engine assets into other engines if you wish. Now at the same time, there are other options out there. I actually did a video on exporting out from Unreal Engine. You can actually export from directly inside of Unreal Engine. But that of course requires you to open up Unreal Engine and has its own caveats. Also, the export process isn't always perfect. Now, another option out there is using Omniverse or the USD Universal Scene Description Format, and that one is stellar. It brings out your scene pretty much at a one-to-one -one recreation and is a great option. Unfortunately, setting up Omniverse is a bit of a pain, and you are exporting out your entire scene in that scenario, but you are going to get basically an exact duplicate, and truth of the matter is, the future of exports is probably USD. Now, recently, I was dealing with the best of Polygon Game Dev Assets Bundle, which by the way is running right now on Humble. I will link it down below. It is a great, great source of assets. Unfortunately, there is a small problem. The assets, if you download them in source format, are in FBX ASCII format. Now, ASCII format for FBX isn't really that common and isn't well supported in the... Um, uh, Blender engine, etc. So opening up FBX files can be a bit of a trick when they are in ASCII format. So I started looking at alternatives. So if you actually go ahead and get one of these packs, you're going to find you can download them in a variety of formats. So you see here, I have the source files. And as I mentioned, um, if you look at things, a lot of them are in FBX. Now, some of them are in OBJ, which means no problem at all. But when you're dealing with the FBX, if they're ASCII, you can have a bit of an issue there. But you also come in here, you can see you can download directly them for Unity formats and Unreal Engine format. If you go to the Unreal Engine format, what you're going to see is all of the files are available in uh, the typical Unreal format. Now, if you go and look at what that means, that means you asset files, all Unreal things, textures, um, uh, polygonal data, so on, they're all stored in U asset format. And that's where today's tool comes in. This is something called um, U model, and this is from viewing Unreal Engine models going back to like the 2010s kind of thing. It's been around for a very long time. And it's a lot of the purpose behind this was to view models created in uh, various different games. So I'm going to show you it in action right here. we got a 64-bit version of it. By the way, this is also available for Linux and there's command line tools. By the way, there are command line tools. We're not going to be covering them today. Um, but you can also use the command line tools on Mac OS. So Linux and Windows have this nice GUI interface. Mac OS has the other options. So the first thing you've got to do is tell it where your game files are. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to point it at the Cinti stuff. So we're going to go Cinti project content, uh, and then we can go polygon sci-fi space. Uh, and we could stop there. Basically, you've got the ability to navigate down, but I'm going to go directly into the meshes folder and we will say there. Now you've also got the option of saying, okay, which version of the game engine are we dealing with? So you can say Unreal Engine 4, uh, version 4.27. It does seem to work somewhat with 5, although what I'm finding is across the board, I do have some issues with textures. You can also say what kind of things do we want to view and export, including skeletal mesh, animations, and so on. Um, and yeah, so we'll go with that and we'll click OK. And you're going to notice here, we now have all these various different assets available. Now, I can pick a single one like this, and we can just open it up. And you can use it as a viewer, and you can see that asset like so. Now, we can also press O and go back to that uh, page we were at before. And then what I could do is basically grab a whole selection of things. Like, like just think of this as like an image file viewer. Uh, and then we can go open. And it's going to open all of those things up like so. And now I can use page up, page down, and we can actually look at an entire directory of Unreal Engine assets. Now, the really cool thing about using this viewer for doing this kind of stuff is I do not need to load up Unreal Engine at all. So, you know, Unreal Engine monthly gives away a ton of assets and you may want to use them in another engine. Well, this here is one of your options. Also, if you get something like the Cinti pack and you want to use a U asset version, uh, you can grab it this way. So that is the cool thing about U model view. Now, again, I do run into some issues with text. And, and the example we're looking at today, uh, so again, I'll go back there, downloads, I'm going to export out a ship. Um, Cinti has a really weird texturing setup, so I'm, I'm going to show you how this works. So basically, we'll go in here and we'll do one of the ships, meshes, vehicles. Okay, select that folder, uh, and yeah, we'll go with all the defaults for everything. We'll open everything up like so. All right, so here is everything being brought in, bah, 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 bah. and again, I'm going to flip through them. Now, you're going to notice the vast majority of these things are not textured. I'm going to grab a ship such as this guy right here, and then when you want to bring it out, you go here, you go to Tools, 
and you can export the current options. You can also do options, but the export current options will actually bring up the option screen. So here are your various different options. You can bring things out in GLTF or in PSK or MD5 mesh format for the skeletal mesh. By the way, this one, ironically enough, just got updated. So there is an imported in Blender for importing PSK files, uh, also uh, PSKX files for the static mesh. Uh, so that is an option, and there is a Blender upporter, which literally was updated today. I'm going to show you that in a second. I thought that was kind of hilarious because these two projects have been kind of around forever and not really uh, support. Now, the weird thing is I do get this. Uh, I do have texture issues when working with this guy. It might be user error. I'm not sure, but I've generally had to recreate the textures, which isn't really a huge deal, especially when you deal with the Cinti stuff, because I'm going to show they actually use multiple texture maps for a single object, so you can swap between things. So I'm going to show you how to bring this exported object into Blender. You set the output directory for it, export directory for it, which is uh, underneath our install folder, which works for me, and click OK. So now it has exported this mesh out so we head on back over here to our thing you're gonna see you model export and there is our um, content available right there so I could come in here we can load that GLTF up in blender so let's fire up our trusty blender I have to sacrifice at least one default cube per video or the uh, blender gods will be upset with me so there goes my sacrifice all right so file import uh, GLTF and then that was in downloads you model win 32 you model export and there is the gltf file so again you're going to notice it comes in imported perfectly which is very nice but what you're not getting is that texture off the hop now you are getting the materials created so if i go over here and we go to the uh, shader editor you're going to notice we have a, a shader was created for it we just don't get the textures now again the nice thing I, with all of the Cinti stuff so we're going to go in here uh, and we'll go to the source version of this so uh, source files textures, what they've done is they basically create one set of textures which can be used over and over again. So here are your defaults. I'll just drop that in here. And then we're just going to connect that into the color channel like so. And there you see our fully textured ship ready to go in whatever environment we want. Now, the cool thing, again, is they have all of these alt folders like so. And let me just bring this guy over and this guy over. So what you can do is switch these textures on the fly and get completely different texture map results. And there, as you saw, there were dozens and dozens and dozens of them. So that's one of the cool things. You're going to probably deal with like, setting up the textures when working with the Cinti stuff anyway. So that is not going to be as big of a deal. But if you're using this guy, uh, so let me just shut it down completely, and you're working with an Unreal project directly. So again, let me go back to downloads, uh, go to U model viewer, fire that one up. What you're going to find is, so if I go to a Unity, I'm sorry, an Unreal Engine project, you're going to find uh, things show up perfectly, but the textures don't export correctly. So I go here, Unreal Engine project, uh, my project. So this is a UE5 project, but it still works just fine. So content, uh, starter content, we'll select that folder. Okay, so go ahead and open that one up. So you see we've got a number of different assets available right here. So we're going to go into the props folder, and you're going to find, so for example, the trusty chair. Uh, that you'll see in every single Unreal Engine project. There it is. The problem is these textures do not actually export with it. Now you can actually, if I bring them out in other formats, so if I come out here, export the current object, and I export it out using this format, I say bring out these files. I'll bring them out in uh, PNG format, DDS formatted, and we'll export that one out. Uh, head on over here, you're gonna find there's the props. There is the material, so that is where it's created. A materials file is created for it, but it will also export out the textures. So you can get the textures and recreate them yourself in your other environment. Unfortunately, it doesn't hook the textures up for you. I don't know why that is, but realistically, this is one of the fastest ways to get an Unreal Engine model out. It may not, oops, that was not part of the user interface. It may not be ultimately perfect, but you can use this again as a viewer uh, directly from the file system. You can use it as an exporter. There are command line options for doing batch conversions and so on. You can also use this to look at um, materials. So as I said, everything is encoded so you see there uh all you assets everything is in a variety of different formats by the way it does support skeletal animations and so on uh, so if you're dealing with you asset files and you have to either view them or get them into another format uh, the ue viewer is definitely a tool you should add to your toolbox and the cool thing is once again it is free now the interesting thing is and as you can probably tell from the user interface this is something from a bygone era uh, but it was updated on January the 7th, 2022. 
to support the newest versions of Unreal Engine. Uh, and it does seem to work for the most part with Unreal Engine 5 content as well, by the way. But it's weird to see this update because you want to get an idea of the kind of time frame we were talking about here. Well, this is an open source project. So you can see over here, uh, it is available up on GitHub. It is under the MIT license. So let's go take a look at when the releases were. So we had a release on December the 17th with Unreal Engine 4.27 support, which is very cool. So it updated so it can now support those formats. Uh, the previous releases <laughs> before that uh, were uh, September 2014. So 2014, 2014, 2021. So this is a giant fluke. Just as I'm looking for a tool for exporting uh, Unreal Engine assets, I find this project that has literally just been updated after like seven years of silence, which is kind of cool. And then the funniest thing is, so I ran into it. I'm running this guy, and it's got that file format, their, their PSK format. So I'm like, okay, is there a uh, Blender importer if we want to work with that format? Well, yes, there is. There is a Blender 3D importer for PSK and PSA add-on, and it was updated. Yeah, <laughs> five hours ago, and it was released two hours ago. So the most recent release of this importer was two hours ago, which is absolutely nuts because, again, this project has been uh, around for quite a while uh, and pretty much dormant. Then all of a sudden, boom, the other one gets an update, and the importer required to work with the files was literally updated uh, pretty much as I'm thinking to make this video, which I, I found uh, really kind of funny. So anyways, if you're interested in grabbing it, once again, it is available for Windows or Linux. Uh, no real requirements here. You got to have OpenGL 1.1 video card. If you do not have a 1.1 video card, yeah, uh, I feel for you. I really do, because you've got a I don't know, a Tandy 2 perhaps, uh, but available for download directly here. It, it is donation-based, so if you like the tool, uh, you can donate to him. He's got a couple of other uh, things. He's got uh, an Actor X importer, which might be his other file format, uh, and a few other things here. Interestingly enough, is he... He didn't create Zlib, did he? Uh, wow. Oh, he created Fast Zlib. Interesting. So uh, definitely a cool project worth checking out if you're working with Unreal Engine or if you're working with another engine and you want to bring in Unreal Engine content. Now, again, it's not going to support all the fanciest new stuff. It's not going to support, you know, Nanite LOD meshes or it probably isn't going to handle blends too well, etc. You're not going to get uber amazing texture results out, you know, so if you got advanced shaders and such coming out. But if you got simple props and such that you need to export out of Unreal Engine, uh, the UE Viewer is uh, probably one of the best tools out there and again it's it's a 2014 product that just got magically updated just a month or two before I needed it. So I figured I would share this one with you. So that is UE Viewer, a Swiss Army knife tool for dealing with Unreal Engine assets. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.